Good morning. My name is Romeo Danielis, and I'm professor of applied economics at the University of Trieste. The topic I would like to discuss with you is the economics of electric uh, vehicles. Um, basically, I would like to discuss uh, five points. Um, the first one is why do we need uh, electric vehicles? Um, the second one, are electric vehicles technologically feasible? Um, the main part of the presentation will be on whether uh, there is an economic case for electric vehicles. Then very quickly, we'll go through uh, the uh, electric vehicles availability uh, for each uh, transport mode, uh, electric vehicles are available. And uh, as a conclusion, as a general question, we'd like to discuss very briefly whether it is, it is possible to decarbonize transport, the transport sector. Well, basically, the answer to the first question is yes, we need electric vehicles. They are a promising uh, innovation, they are promising technology. Uh, the main reason is environmental. We need electric vehicles uh, in order to decrease or reduce or hopefully cut uh, local air emissions. And we need electric vehicles also to reduce CO2 uh, um, emissions which, as we know, we are responsible for um, global change. Um, cutting local air emissions is very important because cities around the world, uh, not so much in Europe as uh, uh, in, in other parts of the world, like in Asia or in Africa, suffer tremendously from uh, air pollution, very high level of, of air pollution. Um, sometimes they are even 10 times as much as required by the um, World Health Organization. Uh, so there is a tremendous uh, um, impact on the population health in terms of asthma and in, in terms also of premature death. Uh, the problem is also in Europe, uh, but um, spread around uh, not uniformly. And uh, as you can see, uh, also in Northern Italy, the problem of uh, uh, local air emissions is uh, very serious. Global uh, CO2 emissions are on the increase. Um, and the transport is one of the sectors that are uh, mostly responsible for the increase in CO2, in CO2 emissions. Uh, while other sectors like energy, like industry, agriculture, uh, residential and commercial activities reduced over the years, in the last 20 years, 15, 15 20 years, their CO2 emissions actually uh, they are increased uh, in transport. So transport has a strong responsibility in uh, uh, emitting CO2. Uh, 20, it is estimated that 27% of the CO2 comes from transport. Therefore, it's quite important to reduce it. One of the ways, one of the most important ways is to substitute uh, fossil fuels, oil, basically, with uh, um, electricity, especially when the electricity is produced from non-fossil fuel sources, so renewable resources. The estimates that we have is that electric vehicles emit, on average, 55% less CO2 than um, electric vehicles, than conventional vehicles, uh, internal combustion engine vehicles. And uh, the reduction depends uh, very much on the um, electricity mix, so how the electricity is produced. So in some countries, the electricity mix is very clean, so the re reduction can go up to 85%. In other countries, uh, slightly less, in Poland, that are, that's the electricity mix that is mostly based, more based on coal, the reduction is still 25%. On average, it's 55%. What's uh, um, very important to keep in mind is that uh, the electricity mix is getting cleaner and cleaner. Um, luckily, the percentage of renewable uh, uh, resources in the uh, European electricity mix is uh, increasing and 
not only in, EU, in Europe, but also in the United States, where it, uh, renewables are up to uh, 70, uh, um, 17% of the electricity, um, of the uh, electricity sources used to generate electricity. So a very, very promising uh, technology. Um, are electric vehicles technically feasible? Well, again, I would say that the answer is yes. Um, in fact, now we have uh, more than 5 million electric cars on the roads. Uh, we have batteries whose life, uh, lifespan is very high, uh, more than 10 years, more than 100,000 uh, miles, and the degradation curve is uh, rather limited. That is, uh, um, batteries last uh, a long time and they degrade very slowly. Of course, there are problems, problems with uh, uh, cobalt, for example, rare components included in the battery. Of course, there is a problem with recycling. Of course, there is a problem with uh, electric vehicles or batteries catching fire. Um, but we have also um, constant improvements in the battery technology. Uh, and the very promising technology is the solid state battery that are not uh, inflammable, for, for example. We, do, we need batteries for electric vehicles, but we need also charging infrastructure because, of, of course, the electric vehicles need to be charged, like um, internal combustion engines uh, vehicles need uh, petrol stations. Here we need uh, electric uh, stations, so uh, charging stations for electricity. <coughs> and the, <coughs> the good news <coughs> in this case is there's also that uh, the, the, the construction of the charging infrastructure is uh, progressing very rapidly, both in terms of numbers and in terms of power. Now, it's not uncommon to find uh, charging stations that, can, that have a power of 350 kilowatt. Uh, the network, uh, there are various networks that are um, a proprietary networks like the Tesla network that belongs to uh, the Tesla um, Tesla to Tesla Motors. Uh, there is there are other networks um, which compete with, with, with each other. Uh, another important one is the Ionity network that is actually built by the main uh, car manufacturers, uh, European, German car manufacturers, and American car manufacturers, and they, they build quite an extensive and widespread uh, network. And other networks is this, for example, the Fastnet network in uh, the Netherlands. That is quite interesting because it's privately owned. Uh, it's not uh, financed by car manufacturers, but uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a standalone uh, firm. And it also uses um, solar power in order to generate part of the electricity that goes into the car. So very, very promising. Now, the third question, the main question uh, from an economic point of view is whether uh, electric vehicles are economically feasible or not. And feasible, what does it mean? It means that um, electric vehicles need to be um, interesting for the consumer. So the consumer uh, has to make the choice to buy them and interesting for the industry, for the automotive industry, that needs to uh, construct them, manufacture them, and sell them. Now, um, one of the concepts, the important concepts to judge the cost competitiveness of electric vehicles from the um, uh, consumer's point of view is the total cost of ownership. What is the total cost of ownership? The total cost of ownership is the the, the sum of all the costs that uh, one incurs in into when buying uh, an electric when this, when deciding to acquire an electric vehicle and here i have some uh, formulas that explain what are the components uh, of the total cost uh, of ownership model so how to calculate what are the variables that enter into this model without going into the details 
uh, we have some initial costs buying the vehicle, um, um, discounts, also potential discounts, subsidies, uh, registration taxes, installation taxes. Then there are the uh, annual operating costs, so the costs for operating actually the vehicle, the vehicle uh, that are um, the tax, the circulation tax, the insurance premium, the maintenance and repairs cost, and uh, the fuel cost. And another a third component of this equation uh, is the residual value. So if I sell the, the vehicle, how much do I get? So that we have a, a specific model. The specific model allows us to estimate the uh, total cost of ownership per kilometer. This is the important metric. What, how much does it cost uh, to uh, buy and operate uh, an electric vehicle? This is an important decision for the consumer. Um, I mean, without going to, into, into the, too much into the details, the variables, the terms so of the, the determinants of the total cost of ownership, we can say that are partly market variables, so determined by the supply and demand, let's say, financial variables, so determined by the uh, interest rates uh, that one has to pay in order to uh, use uh, the funds. There are some policy variables because subsidies, taxes, uh, taxes on petrol or diesel or electricity price, uh, parking fees, these are all decisions that are taken at the national and local level by policymakers. Then there are some mobility variables because the total cost of ownership depends on how much we travel and where we travel, how much is, for example, the percentage of urban trips. And uh, another important set of variables is the charging habits and the location variables. So where do we charge? Because the charging costs depend uh, on whether we charge at home or in public charging. So all these uh, variables determine the results. We have uh, uh, implemented the model in Excel, in Excel that estimates uh, these variables. What are the results? What are the main results that we get from this model? The main results is that EVs are not yet, at the current uh, prices, cost competitive unless high annual travel distances are made. So unless the, the electric vehicles are used for long distances, unless there are incentivizing policies, unless they are used mostly for urban driving where electric vehicles are more efficient, and unless uh, we charge uh, mainly at home, because at home we pay charging rates that are lower than in public, uh, in public charges. So overall, I would say that so far, we don't have an economic, strong economic case for electric vehicles, but provided that certain conditions exist, so distance, policy, urban use, and charging at home, so private garage, there might be situations where electric vehicles are uh, cost competitive from a private uh, perspective, not from a social perspective, but from a private perspective. Uh, next, we can study how we how consumers actually made the uh, decisions because decisions are not made only on based on monetary terms, but also on non-monetary variables, such as attitudes, belief, uh, time constraints, and uh, and so on. And here we have uh, in economics we have models able to study how the different variables play uh, a, a role in in the in um, making. In deciding uh, which uh, car to buy, and uh, but I won't go into detail into this. Um, let's let's go uh, look now at the supply. Um, so the automotive industry perspective point of view, and here we can say three things. First, there is an increased variety in the electric models offered. Uh, numbers, the numbers of uh, electric vehicles available in the market are increasing. 
in the United, in the US there are 45 now, so it's a quite a large variety on electric cars available. Uh, and more are coming. This is a list of the coming models uh, into uh, end the second part of this year and next year. And here we can see that also the big uh, players such as uh, Volkswagen or uh, BMW are entering and Peugeot uh, are entering uh, the market. And also there are a, 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 a quite a long list of Chinese related firms that are enter, entering the market. So the, the supply of electric cars is rapidly increasing. We don't have yet the Toyota. Maybe Toyota is the only on the main uh, automotive industry that has not focus on electric vehicles yet, but rather on hybrid vehicles. But we can see that the, uh, the, the, the automotive in, uh, industry, the automotive firms, made larger and larger investment uh, in, in in models. So they believe, now we can say that they believe in uh, electric vehicles. So they think that the electric vehicle will be the future. Of course, the battery is a crucial factor in this. And luckily, the prices of the batteries are rapidly decreasing thanks to uh, technological innovation and thanks to uh, economies of scale. So larger volumes determine that the price of battery uh, are rapidly decreasing. You can see that uh, um, every year all, almost 20% uh, decrease in the battery price. So that's important. Scale, of course. Um, charging stations, as, uh, as um, I said before, they are also increasing. And so as a result of this, the number of electric vehicles sold at the world level are, are rapidly increasing. And this is uh, um, a slide that shows the numbers by state. Uh, you can see that Norway is uh, 50, uh, almost 50% of the new vehicles are electric. Iceland is 90%, Sweden 8%, but also big players like China are uh, at, uh, were 2018 at point, uh, uh, 4.2. Italy is not in this list because in 2018, uh, the percentage was 0 0.1. But now, thanks to the incentives, the, per the percentage is up to 0 0.6. So still low, uh, low numbers, but uh, rapidly increase. So we can say <coughs> with confidence, and this is also the opinion of the International Energy Agency, we can say that, that with confidence that more and more EVs are coming to the market. So the future of cars, at least, is uh, very likely going to be uh, electric. Okay, And uh, uh, more and more, um, um, big players in the automotive industry are uh, really investing on electric cars. Do we have only cars? Uh, no, transport is not only cars, but it's also scooters. And here the good news is also the availability of uh, more and more electric scooters. We have buses and same, uh, same conclusion, more and more buses are electric. Here uh, is a Chinese city that where all buses are electric, but um, uh, more and more also European uh, um, cities are introducing electric buses. Um, coaches for intercity travel, we have some examples, but not very many of electric. Taxis are another important uh, component. Some cities uh, abroad and also in Italy are introducing electric taxis. Urban freight distribution uh, vans. So vans is another important uh, component, vehicle of the uh, urban uh, traffic. And here also we have progressively uh, more vehicles that are electric. In terms of trucks, the situation is much more difficult because trucks need more power. We don't have bigger enough um, any batteries or we, we, need, we, we need too many batteries and too many batteries is not good for the overall payload of the trucks. There are special vehicles and uh, the question of air transport uh, and of uh, international shipping. Here, 
there are some examples of uh, um, air um, airplanes that go electric, but only the small ones, not the big ones yet. And the same for uh, ships, um, um, ferries, or ships for river or lakes uh, now are in progressively introducing electric, but of course, international ships or the big container ships are still uh, running on, uh, on diesel. So that's the problem is not solved yet. So to, to conclude with a more broader uh, question, is it possible to decarbonize transport? Hmm? Uh, not easy. As we have, we have seen, it can be done for small vehicles for the, the, the urban level, hmm? but it's much harder to do it for uh, freight and for inter long distance international freight and uh, uh, air transportation. So thank you for your attention.